so for this week of awareness meditation training, we're exploring loving awareness. And we're moving into the final phase of this training where we're exploring a deeper embodied integration of our realization and recognition and, and our ability to rest in awareness. Um, in particular, beyond the cushion, uh, beyond formal practice, and also um, with a sense of spontaneity in our daily life. Uh, but today we're starting with loving awareness. Um, and uh, with loving awareness, as we're going to explore here, there's a sense of this recognition and, and, and resting and awareness dropping down into the body. And we've already kind of hinted at this in, in previous weeks where we start also feeling naturally a sense of tenderness in our experience when we are resting in awareness. So here we're going to look at this and cultivate this uh, intentionally uh, through a loving awareness practice. But let's first talk about what is loving awareness because that's the first big question. Like what the heck do we mean when we say loving awareness? So let's look at the two words, awareness. Uh, we have talked about letting go of intention, uh, not needing to do anything, of not getting involved uh, with what's going on. At least all of this from the sense of kind of habitually doing so, unconsciously, habitually getting involved in whatever's going on in awareness, loosening that so that way we can rest in what is normally the background of our experience, awareness, so we can really see and, and rest in awareness. In particular, we often notice up front the emptiness of awareness, the, the vast radical openness and spaciousness of awareness. Now with the word love, which can be defined in many, many ways, I think intuitively, generally speaking, we all have a, a sense of uh, automatically, there's a sense of connection to what's going on, okay? There's automatically, if we wanna use the word connection, involvement, there's something you know, it's not just resting in emptiness, okay? So we already have a sense there, okay, that's really interesting. If awareness, typically we've been practicing is like letting go of doing anything and not getting involved, there's some sense of connection with uh, the word love and loving awareness. So here, uh, all of this loving awareness can be put out as like a, a proposition for you to consider. You know, you can sit with it, see what you see what you think, see what arises in your experience, okay, when we do this meditation. For me, um, there's a sense of, of feeling the inextricable interconnection to everything and everyone. And when we have that experience, we could use the word love to describe what that is like. But something much more really, really foundational that seems essential to who we are as humans. There's some level of us that feels like love. Just It just is, just like awareness is, this loving awareness just is. Uh, there's also a sense with awareness, when we talk about the, the spaciousness, where we talk about having more room for everything that's arising, we can also say awareness can hold it all, right? Like everything that arises in awareness is seen and recognized by awareness. That phrase for me indicates, and it points to this tenderness, this love, that it can hold it all. Ah, it's lovely. Um, a a well-known quote that a lot of people share and I share often is uh, from Sri Nisargatada Maharaj. And it's wisdom tells me I'm nothing. Love tells me I'm everything. Between these two, my life flows. So wisdom tells me I'm nothing. So this is that awareness, the, the emptiness, the spaciousness of not being involved in anything. I'm not any of these things that arise. And, but love tells me I am everything. You know, I'm not just one of these things or some part of us that is just inextricably interconnected with everything. So to me, this captures this, uh, this phrase, loving awareness. There's also a sense that just like we talk about effortlessness with awareness, then this would be the proposition here that, uh, loving awareness is also effortless, okay? If we're talking about something that requires effort, that requires constructing something, then putting out here that that's not what we're talking about with loving awareness, okay? So this is something that's natural, that's just present um, immediately, just like we experience awareness itself. 
Now, um, <clears throat> uh, one point to make here that I think is important is that it's not any particular instance of love, okay? Or any particular instance of an emotion. This is similar when we talk about all the thoughts that arise in mind. As important or unimportant as any thought is, we're trying to point to awareness and it's not any one of these thoughts. It's not like, oh, if I think this thought or if I don't think this thought, then there it is. No, awareness is aware of all of that, the thoughts and no thoughts. Um, same thing with loving awareness here, that it would, wouldn't be any particular instance of love or of an emotion. Judith Blackstone talks about in, in the realization process, um, we will tune to the quality of love in the chest. And it's a common place where we might have a somatic experience of love, although we can experience that anywhere in the body. Um, and in describing this word, she's also uh, uh, is passionate about making the point that it's not about loving any particular person or object or thing experience. It's something that feels really, really essential. It's the ground of all emotion, the ground of all love, if you will. Uh, Ram Das has a great guided meditation that then somebody turned into a little lovely Spotify music track with his guided meditation over it. Some of you might have already heard it, but he has a line in there talking about uh, loving awareness. And, and he says that I, I love everything that I'm aware of. That's what happens. But again, we ask the question in what way, you know, and so this is why I have these prefaces, you know, and it's different than a personal specific love that we might have with a partner family member, a friend, you know, we're not in love with every single person in a personal relative way. Okay. We don't even know. We don't, we know like less than 1% of the people that exist. <laughs> so, we, uh, you know, we don't have this kind of personal love. So again, we have two ways of looking at this loving awareness. One is to say, what is it and what isn't it? <laughs> and then if we let go of it, well, it's not that, then what, where do we rest? What are we resting in? Okay. Um, so we don't have to cultivate a particular love for anybody because we, we, you know, can have difficulty with that, right? Or just like, no, I don't, I don't love that person. Okay, great. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, so, you know, in this practice, you know, we can sit with the question one, what is loving awareness? Okay, you all can sit with that as well and do an inquiry practice with it. What is loving awareness? And see what arises, okay? Um, some of what I'm saying, you can consider and see how that, uh, lands or doesn't land, you know, in your practice. Um, my good friend, Stuart Davis, who's a wonderful artist, is fond of uh, this quote, love has no opposite. It's really lovely. This also points to what we mean by loving awareness here. So relatively speaking, we often talk about love having an opposite, maybe it's hatred, right? Or indifference or whatever it might be. There's an opposite. But here, and just like with awareness, is there an is there an opposite of awareness? No, awareness doesn't seem to have a location. It doesn't seem to have a beginning or an end. Everything that arises in our experience arises in awareness. So similarly here, loving awareness here has no opposite. And similarly, it doesn't require again intention or effort, although in our practice. We practice so that way we can kind of let go into this experience. So inevitably, um, what comes up is finding the ways in which we don't feel open. We feel constricted or uh, barriers to our to an open heart, barriers to uh, experiencing uh, this loving awareness, and that's really natural. We've already talked about that with embodied awareness. That um, on one hand, it's our birthright to experience this awareness, this spaciousness, this stillness, it's part of who we are. And at the same time, there's a lot of experiences we have in life that that have left a mark and, and we feel closed down in certain ways. And it's difficult to experience that all the time and in every situation throughout our whole being. And we can practice in, in a, a variety of ways to heal, to, to open up, to reclaim more of our being and, and be able to rest in awareness, to be able to rest in loving awareness. Okay, so it's a both and situation for me here. But that's really important to note here because loving awareness is gonna bring up probably uh, more ways in which we feel you know, 
um, some tension or constriction around our experience of love. But I would say what's really interesting for me is even practicing is loving awareness for me. Like even I'm gonna sit down, I'm like, I don't feel this at all, but I'm gonna practice. Even ask the question, what is loving awareness? That practice is loving awareness. I'm, I'm being held, the practice is holding me in that moment. So there is the possibility to heal, you know, to there's that possibility, even if we don't feel it in this moment. Now the phrases we're gonna work with today in particular, um, three phrases, may I know loving awareness, I am loving awareness, and then the pith phrase, loving awareness. It's kind of a slight modification to our uh, multidimensional meditation we use at Buddhist Geeks. Um, so this offers you three different phrases to sit with this and see what arises. Uh, as always, I really encourage radical curiosity. Just say, okay, I'm gonna try this and, and, and see what happens without expectations, which as we've discussed is really important in awareness meditation training. The more we can let go of expectations, you know, paradoxically to our expecting mind, <laughs> we are able to experience a deepening more easily. So that's what I would offer here is to, let's just use these phrases and see what happens. <clears throat> 